Good morning folks and welcome in for another video on myself, Darren. This is the life of Darren, HTV driver here in the UK. First things first, just strapping down all my load, making sure it's all secured. Done the vehicle checks already, We're just checking that these little caps are all in the right position where they're pointing, for an example, arrow to arrow. By the way, with these, if you are a new driver, just to let you know, if one of these are missing, the vehicle will be VOR'd. So what you need to do is, if one's missing, remove them all, and you're perfectly fine to go. Get that nice and tight. And of course, not forgetting the reg plate. Before I leave, double checking the lights are all working and all the electrics. Same with all the side markers going to the sides, make sure they're all lit up. Now we're happy with the trailer and the load is secured, time to hit the road. Job number one is a collection of four pallets down in crew, and then we're taking the full load then to Whitchurch. I've come off the M6 for the south part of crew on junction 16, I think it is off the top of my head. So I've jumped on the A500 and I'm about to just come off the A500 for the A5. 020 so I can go up to crew. I've got three and a half miles left to go. I think it's pretty quiet again today, which is not too bad really for us drivers. Hopefully, I can get a half decent finish time again. I'm quite enjoying finishing before six, it's really, really good. One day I finished early so I could go pick Little Man up. So that was a uh, pre-arranged work because um, Leanne had a bit of issue at work so she couldn't get out to go pick him up so luckily I was in the area so I was able to finish work early enough to go and get him. Yesterday I had Milton Keynes and then Bamber after that. It was a long drive, like nine hours, maybe a little bit over nine hours drive all together. We hit a lot of traffic in the morning going down. And then we had the accident on the way up, didn't we, as well, we've seen on the M5, which put us back a little bit. So yesterday I was finishing for, what time did I finish last night? Was it half past five? I think it was around half past five. That's not too bad, but it was a half past four in the morning start. Whereas this morning, I had a little bit of a lie-in. So I didn't have to get up out of bed until five because it was a six o'clock start today. And the time is now already eight o'clock. So I've been in for two hours already and it feels like I've been in for 20 minutes if we've been honest with you. It just goes so fast when you're doing driving though, doesn't it? So we've got two miles to go. It's the first time making a collection from this place. So I don't really know what to expect either. I've not done a Google Maps this morning. Because some of the business names, when you look at them, you just know it's gonna be a bigger warehouse with a yard, etc. And then you get some of them, you just know it's gonna be a tiny little industry estate, so it's best off doing a little bit of a Google map beforehand. I'd probably recommend doing that before going to anywhere you've never been before. Always give it a little bit of a Google Maps prior. It does help when you get there, you know what to look for. So maybe I should start, should start using my own device, eh? Arrived here now at the first job for quarter past eight, so get yourself booked in and then collect the four pallets. That's the first part of the day done. Now I just need to head over to Whitechurch now. And in total, it's 17 miles away. And they're not coming this way, are they? No, it's reversing back. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, I don't think two trucks will fit down here, mate. It's trying to reverse it in that yard, maybe. Given plenty of space. Is that a truck trying to reverse? A little van trying to get around him? Yep. Yeah. 
come on buddy you can see a truck reversing down the road and yet you still try to squeeze down the side of them I think he's trying to get into these bays here to the right on the side of the road this car past and I can go some people are like the van driver just then got no patience have they just let the trucker do what he's doing reverse nice and safely instead of creating an obstacle for the driver you know what I mean 30 seconds and go hurt anybody is it if you just wait ah well it's a problem with today's society, isn't it? Everyone's in a rush to get nowhere. Right then, as I was saying, Whitchurch, 17 miles away, and I'll be there in about 40 minutes, give or take. Got to cut through all the country roads now to get there. It's not a bad little drive, especially a nice sunny day like today. Makes it even better, doesn't it? Um, Fourth Avenue, can I? I've got to cut through there actually on the left hand side. Didn't know about that. Maybe next time, I'll go that way instead. Just got to divert around the south of Nantwich. And I'm on the A530 at the moment. 11 miles to go. Traffic's been alright overall today as well. I don't want to jinx myself or anything. But overall, it's not been too bad. Hopefully, the rest of the day stays like this as well. Nice and sunny. A little bit of a wet one yesterday in certain areas. I know up Warmington area was quite bad rain. But down in uh, Banbury and stuff, it's quite nice, wasn't it? It's seen on the video. Summer, it's so good, isn't it? Nice weather. Slow down to 30. Just following the signs now for Whitchurch. Not much of a secret bunker, there's a big sign there. Has anybody actually visited the secret bunker? Is it any good? Is it, is it worth visiting with the family, with the kids or anything? I suppose it's like a museum of some sort, isn't it? That's what I imagine it being. Gotta be careful on corners like that, you cut your trailer doesn't cut the corner. And left here you go. So we'll take a little bit of the right hand side road. Just get a nice big swing. The trailer doesn't cut the corners. Roads are wide enough anyway for two trucks, that's alright for passing. Just gotta slow down a little bit. That looks nice, doesn't it? A big lake. Oh, we've gone and lost my gloves again. I spilt some coffee on them this morning, so I washed them and then I put them on here because this gets really hot. So I was trying to dry them out at my last collection and then I left them there when I drove off. Yep, they've gone. The place that I'm delivering to today 
they give us a booking time for 10 o'clock. And guess what time they go on their break? 10 o'clock. Time for a bit of Netflix and chill. Take the cabin out. That's an easy reverse. And on the steering wheel, you just want to do it nice and gentle. Just take little turns. I've got loads of pallets on my passenger side as well, so just have to be careful. I don't knock any of them. Time is now 10 to 11 and I'm on my way to my first collection of the day which is over in Congleton so it's the little business which is that little tiny bridge at Congleton that I travel over I've done POV quite a few times on previous videos so today I thought I'd just drive over as normal instead of doing a POV and stuff um, if you want more POV driving just let me know down below in comments as well is that something you do enjoy I tend not to do POV driving too much like with the camera on my head is because if you're looking left and right which you do need to look when you're driving you need to make sure you're checking all the mirrors checking the trailer etc um, my head moves around like an owl so I'm flicking back and forth really quick so I don't want to pass any like motion sickness onto anybody by doing it but I'm willing to do it if that's what you want though and I'll just have to be a little bit more cautious when swinging my head left to right <laughs> if that makes sense i hope it does but yeah let me know down below in comments if you want a bit more of the camera on the head a bit of pov i can do that with no problems uh, to get to congleton from where i am now i'm gonna jump up to nantwich and then onto the a500 m6 north and then come off uh, congleton there and cut through their little country lanes it's currently 29 miles away and one hour driving time in total. It's not a bad little drive, is it? Got lovely views on left and right. Got a bit more cloudy as well since before. The sun is trying its hardest to break through. The warmth is still there at least and most of all it's dry, isn't it? There's not many much wind either in the air, which is fantastic. Need that sun just to break through that a little bit more. So pay attention quite a bit on these little corners. A bit more tighter than you think when you're in HCV. So I'll make sure your trailer doesn't cut across any of it. All the other drivers taking the corner too wide, there's another thing you have to be cautious of. Right, do me a favour as well folks, if you drive a motorbike, don't get too close to a truck like that guy is. And don't overtake when there's a blind corner coming up. That's just asking for trouble. The fella just flew right past me in between us two. And then overtakes when you're on a corner like this. Is he crazy? Not only for your own safety, it's for others as well. So just, just be careful, keep a bit of distance. You don't need to go full throttle like every time you come up down the country lanes. 
still got seven miles to go and unfortunately I think there's some road work up ahead because it's just come to an absolute standstill and in about five or ten minutes I thought I'd move 20 yards <laughs> I'm not too sure if it might be like a three or a four different bit of lights or is it road works just up here because it's a T-junction well cross junction just up ahead so I'm hoping the lights aren't there and they are just round the corner well, you can't really see to be honest with you. it's a busy road this you see so we can back up quite a lot really quickly as well I can't see anything looking round either it's just bright lights as far as I can see that's not a good sign oh, just as a the rigid's trying to do a U-turn, <laughs> a three-point turn in the road. What is going on? So there's an unmarked police car. They've got the sirens going, they've got the lights on, and then they've just joined the queue. Oh, there you go, finally taking over now. I've never seen one of them Kias though, as an under, undercover police car. So the police car has just had to pull over pretty much in the queue behind everybody else. Still got the lights on. They've turned siren noise off, but if they jump on either side of the road, they're just going to get stuck, aren't they? Because it's just really narrow going all the way down. So if they get 100 yards down the road, you've got traffic coming, especially if it's a truck coming towards them. They're stuck, aren't they? Tell you what, folks, you're quite lucky that YouTube doesn't pass over the smell. Because <laughs> that bloody stinks! Oh my god! It's basically a slurry tank right in front of me, and I've been behind it now for about a mile. I know the wind is just blowing straight into the air vents of the truck and <laughs> it stinks, it really does. My word, it is just pure cow manure sewage, isn't it? Basically, it stinks. <coughs> oh, oh my god, I'm not exaggerating either. It absolutely stunk. The whole cab just smells of it now as well. Oh. There's nothing worse. <laughs> choking on it. Still. Oh my word. Woo. Oh yeah. So if you're driving down country lanes, make sure you stay about half a mile behind one of them slurry tanks. Because a fuse make you lightheaded. <laughs> oh god. It still smells really, really potent. Oh god, I've got to get some air freshener for the truck now. Definitely am. Just at the collection place in Congleton, and I've been here for about 45 minutes getting on now. I've been on the phone to Mike twice, so he's trying his best on his end to try and get them organised for the, this collection to get done. The only problem is this place is getting shut down shortly, so I don't know if they've made all the staff redundant. It's just like a skeleton crew what we're on, because it's been really, really quiet. Normally you see forklifts, so I hear them getting about, but... There's literally no movement whatsoever. I think the shot is just open now. But however, on a good note though, I've been able to do a little bit of editing for today's vlog, as you can see now. So here we go. That's what it looks like behind the scenes of everything. And honestly guys, don't make the same mistake as I did by getting close to these fellas. Because it still smells in this cab right now. Need to get through this little side corner. I was going to show you on the way in, but the camera died just before I got here. So I thought 
I'm not, there's nowhere to pull over, do it safely, so I've had to wait until I came here before I could change the camera over. So I need to take it really wide, over to the right. Just got to get my head out the window. To make sure our trailer's going over it. I'm going to go cut the corners. There we go. The front driver's side bumper gets probably about three inches away from that wall on the bridge when you're making that turn. Well, I've done it that many times now. It's quite easy to actually make that turn. At first, it was a little bit daunting. They gonna let me out. Yeah, perfect. So right, the car with the right, white roof, the white car with the red roof, even shall I say. Uh, they did stop for me, but I just waved them to get across because they wanted to turn there as well. They hadn't just cut me up. Don't worry. It might look like they did on the camera. Nice little place, Congleton, though, to be fair. Next job is a collection of nine pallets, and it's over in Nutsford. I'm not using the sat-nav at the moment, so I don't know how many miles <laughs> it is. Probably about 20 miles, give or take. It's not too bad to get there, especially when you know all the little cut-throughs. What's this car doing? Perfect. Thank you very much. You seen exactly where I needed to go to get past that car, and he helped out. So thanks, bud. So the car in front at the moment. Don't know if the cameras can pick it up much. I thought it was um, an extra mirror or something sticking out on the side of the car, but no, it's the fuel cap. <laughs> So I've left the flap wide open and the cap's dangling around. So I'm trying to come up with a plan to get their attention to tell them about the fuel cap. Because if it's full to the brim, that fuel will be spilling all over the place, wasting the money really, isn't it? it probably, to be fair, it probably won't be coming out. But still, I was trying to get a way to get their attention without looking like a psychopath in a big truck flashing them. <laughs> Because if you start flashing people in a truck, the automatic will think, oh my god, this guy's like an impatient driver and he's trying to run me off the road. And I'll come across like a psychopath. It's like, no, you fuel cap, you left it open. It don't matter now, I know they've turned off. Hopefully they'll see it. Hopefully they might have seen it, that's why they did pull off. Let's get to Nutsford from Congleton. That was about just then, don't they knew each other. I need to go through Holmes Chapel. That's the best way to get there. Saves me going all the way up the M6, then dropping back down. I don't remember that housing estate being there. Is that, is that new or is it? It's probably been like a year since we came down this way. That's the whole estate that's been built within a year. I've just not noticed it. Uh, who knows? Um, Holmes Chapel going up far. Up the new bypass bit. And it really needs to do an update on sat nav as well because. Tom Tom isn't actually picking up this bypass and it's been here for about four years. It's not a new place. Alright, up there's the A54 we go. Luckily, us drivers like to have a good shot. So Big thanks to Andy, I was having a chat with him the other day. This place that I'm going to in Nutsford, Northwich Road is closed. So that's the main way in and out in an Arctic, is closed. So what I'm going to have to do is go 
up towards the 556 towards Ultringham, go off one of the junctions and then head down. So that's the best way to get into it. So I need to come off this junction in a mile and a half. So let's go get in here now, slow down a little bit because I've got a service station exit coming up. So I'm going to let the drivers on. But I nearly made the same mistake he did the other day. He had to come all the way down to Congleton and then all the way back up. <laughs> Whereas I forgot about that, and then I'm coming up from Congleton, and I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, I can't go that way. So come off here at 556, and then should be able to come off at one of the junctions in between here and Ultringham, to then drop down towards Nutsford. Hopefully the access is okay in an Arctic. Done it a few times in a rigid, but never in the Arctic. Alright, you put your foot down a little bit, bud, and get in. Second collection done and the time is now three o'clock, so we're making good progress at the moment. However, to get back to the yard, well to the hub, to get unloaded, I should be there by four o'clock, unloaded by half four. Could be a little bit early still, but between half four, quarter to five, who knows what I'm going to be doing. Will I be going home or will I be going somewhere else for another collection? The day is still early, folks. So make sure you stick around to find out what happens shortly in the rest of the day. Well, lie, that was a little bit awkward, but I'm gonna keep it in just for the shits and giggles. <laughs> this and I've got another job. <laughs> I need to stop jinxing myself, I really do. But it's still early anyway at the time, so it's not too bad. So it's 10 past three at the moment. I've just got to take the diverted route up towards Limb Services, so I can get on the M6 up that way. So hopefully I might miss quite a lot of the traffic prior the M6 services. And then I'm going down to the hub, unloading. Once unloaded, collecting a full trailer load from one of the businesses around the corner, the little jam place. And then I'm taking the full load back to our Haydock depot so it can get delivered for tomorrow. Yeah, it's not too bad overall, to be honest. That's quite an all right one. If you get loaded straight away, anyhow. It's a little jam place sometimes to get loaded straight away, but sometimes you know, they're, not, they're not as in a rush as what you'd like it to be. Either way though, it's not far to drive, is it? It's only, 500 yards if that. So it's all good on this side. Should be done by six o'clock. Lovely. Now we're loaded at the hub. Let's go get the collection from around the corner. I think it's gonna be a full load as well, 24 pallets. Cyclists just now got knocked over them by that car. <laughs> they don't even check do they the mirrors or anything. They just pull out, don't they, some drivers? It's crazy. Some of the stuff you see though on a day-to-day -day basis when you're a HCV driver, you're on the road and stuff, it's absolutely absurd, obviously. And they only capture like a third, not even that, of some of the stuff that I see on the road. It's absolutely crazy. And some of the stuff I'll tell you, you probably wouldn't believe it anyway. The amount of people I've seen going around a roundabout the wrong direction, believe it or not, especially over at Haydock Island, I've seen it two or three times where people pull through the lights when it's on a red light and then I've seen other people generally going round and round about uh, Haydock the wrong way because it's a traffic light island so they think when the traffic lights are on green they can just go whichever direction they want <laughs> it's absurd honestly it really is I try and capture as much as I can but I don't keep the camera rolling all the time you see Alright, uh, my next one, it's just here. I told it's all around the corner. Now the biggest problem I've got is that they're leaving right now. And I need to get in that place where that blue car's just coming from. So it's gonna be fun trying to get in there whilst everybody's coming out. And this road gets really busy at this time as well because it's just hit half past four.
going on, Adam? Hey! Go on, mate, you can come next. Top lad, Adam. Got me as the lights on. Just next to the truck, so I'm gonna go next to it first and pull forwards as much space. I don't want to get too close to it though. Because these pallets are more than a ton in weight, they will need strapping up. Nice and tight. Just managed to get it all strapped up and curtain sides done just before the heavens opened up. I'm absolutely soaked and all I've done since it started raining was from that end to that end of the outside straps. The heavens are proper up and up on me. Oh, I'm so okay. I'm not even rushing because I'm that wet already. I'm not getting it. It's bouncing it down. That was a little bit of a tight gap to get in, especially when I've only got that much space in front of me. But I do like a good challenge though. And I'm not now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call it a day on the video because as you can see, I'm now back at the yard. The time is coming up to quarter to six, I do believe. Correction, it's actual 10 past six at the moment. <laughs> so five minutes, drop this, sort the unit out, and then sort of for now, half past six, finish, back home for seven o'clock. Not too bad for a Thursday, getting the hours in still as well. So if you did enjoy it, don't forget that like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again next time. Thank you very much for all the support. Thank you for watching. Bye now, and take care of yourself.